Hello, I'm Stephen Toop. It's been a year of great achievement and change for the University of Cambridge. I'm speaking from the new Student Services Centre, which opened in March, and which for the first time has brought together all the student supporting teams at the University. On the West Cambridge site, we recently opened the new Civil Engineering Building. Work began on the University's new Cavendish Laboratory, a project that will help strengthen the University's position as a globally leading site for physics research. New college buildings, like Newnham's Dorothy Garrett Building, have added greatly to the city's rich architectural mix. We saw sporting success in rowing, yachting, road cycling, ice hockey, sailing and rugby. There was achievement of another kind in groundbreaking research, notably in the award of the Nobel Prize for Chemistry to Sir Greg Winter, Master of Trinity. The prospect of Brexit continues to loom over us. We are no more certain now about whether or how it will happen, but we've continued to plan for the contingency of a disorderly and disruptive exit. Cambridge colleagues continue to engage with government to make sure that the impact of Brexit on immigration, research funding and collaboration are well understood and, where possible, mitigated. And we continue to reach out to our partners around the world, from Munich to Nanjing, from Paris to Delhi, to show through our actions, not only our words, that we are a global university open to global collaboration. Over the past year, we've actively engaged with the new regulator, the Office for Students. As part of our compliance with OFS regulations, the university submitted its access and participation plan. The plan contains ambitious new targets on access. We've said that by 2025, more than 25% of our intake will be from the most underrepresented and disadvantaged backgrounds. That will rise to 33% by 2035. We've also declared that by 2025, more than 69% of the undergraduate student intake will be from state schools. We've expressed a strong commitment to closing all attainment gaps amongst student cohorts. Our most recent admissions figures are exciting and show that we're already attaining some of our targets. It's been one of my greatest satisfactions as a Vice Chancellor to announce in February an unprecedented gift of £100 million to help attract the most talented postgraduate and undergraduate students from the UK and around the world. The donation from David and Claudia Harding was the biggest single gift made to a university in the UK by a British philanthropist. It's now the cornerstone of an ambitious fundraising drive aimed directly at increasing financial and wider support for students at Cambridge. We're committed to ensuring fair access and participation, not only because it's expected of us, but also because it's the right thing to do, and because it will make Cambridge a better place to study, to teach, and to work. Change is the theme of this year's Festival of Ideas, and we can see it in action today. Sometimes the change is in the way we understand ourselves. In February, I announced that an advisory group would be coordinating research into the university's links to historical forms of enslavement. The purpose of this initiative is not to undermine the university's proud history in the abolition movement, but to better understand and acknowledge our own complex, multi-layered past. Sometimes the change we need is in our processes. At the end of 2018, the University launched Our Cambridge, an initiative designed to recognize, realize and liberate the potential of our professional services staff. At a time of increased economic pressure and as we take action to reverse a budget deficit, we're improving the way we manage our finances. We're providing greater transparency on the university's endowments and investment activities. Even as we implement change, however, our commitment to fundamental principles is unwavering. 
Absolutely central among them is the principle of freedom of speech. Cambridge is the natural home for all those who want to challenge ideas and are prepared to have their ideas challenged in turn. And even if ideas make us uncomfortable, it's our duty to ensure their free and lawful expression. But let me be clear, we cannot allow the imperative of free speech to become a cover for hateful or unlawful behavior or language. No other university has contributed more than Cambridge to the sum of human understanding. The question before us today is, how do we move forward? What stories of discovery will we be telling about the university 10, 20, or 50 years from now? For instance, how will we, in years to come, have answered to the growing challenges of mental health? How will we have responded to the crisis in democratic institutions as we know them? How will we have contributed to mitigating the existential threat of climate change? I'm pleased to announce that later this term, we will be formally launching Cambridge Zero, the University of Cambridge Zero Carbon Future Initiative. The initiative's aim is to address holistically the challenge of climate change to help us think about what a sustainable future looks like, and to ensure that policy decisions are based on the best available evidence. Moving forward successfully will require close collaboration amongst colleges, schools, faculties and departments, and the university leadership. But I am confident that our efforts will, over the next few years, help us remain the university we all want to be a collegiate university with a shared sense of purpose, moving towards and helping to build a fairer, better, more sustainable world.